Hello, everyone. My name is Zina Islam, and I'm the Relations Manager Academia Network. Welcome back to the 43rd session of the YSBC Web Lecture Series. The topic of today's conversation is education through Grameen Shikha with our speaker, Mr. Kazi Nazrul Haq, who is the Managing Director of Grameen Shikha. He joined Grameen Bank in 1990 as a senior officer and worked as branch manager in several branches of the bank. He also worked at the Training Institute as well as the International Program Department of the bank. He moved to Grameen Shika in 2001. Mr. Huck writes on social business and has also lectured on social business at different universities as guest speaker. We also have today our moderator, Ms. Nurjahan Begum. Ms. Nurjahan Begum currently works as advisor to Nobel laureate Professor Mohammad Yunus. She has an outstanding career with Grameen since the inception of the bank in 1976. She served as principal of Grameen Bank Central Training Institute, general manager training and special program and deputy managing director of the bank. She became acting managing director of Grameen Bank in 2011. Ms. Nurjahan also worked as Managing Director of Grameen Shika from 1997, the year Shika was established, um, to the end of 2016, December. She is serving as Director of the Center for Mass Education in Science, CMES Bangladesh. Uh, she received the Outstanding Contribution to Education Award at Ed Leadership 7th National Roundtable 2014. So today we have two persons who have dedicated their lives towards creating opportunities for those who do not have easy access access to good education, and we are honored to be here today to, to listen to their story. So let's start today's session by calling Professor Mohamed Yunus on stage to make his opening remarks. Professor Yunus. Hello. Hello, everybody. We are very happy today. Uh, it was a great uh, opportunity for us uh, to listen to two very distinguished persons who have dedicated their life on education. Uh, Noor Jahan, uh, you, uh, some of you may be familiar. Uh, was with Grameen right uh, when it was uh, struggling to shape its uh, policies and uh, ideas in the village of Jobra. But her uh, association with education and uh, uh, programs of education uh, in the village of Jobra predates uh, Grameen and uh, microcredit and all that. Uh, she was working with the children of um, poor families trying to see if we can bring some kind of education. These are all illiterate families. So we created something called um, life-like uh, education, life-oriented education, uh, Jibunastri School. Uh, this was to help young people, little kids, uh, to become aware of their environment and see how things happen around them. Uh, as they come to school, they're supposed to pick up a flower or a leaf of a tree and then discuss how he collected the tree uh, leaf and what kind of tree it is. And then teacher will explain what tree it is and what shape the uh, leaf is and all that. So that they know about the tree, about the flower, about the fruit, about the people and about the insects. They pick up anything they want and bring to school and that becomes the subject matter of discussion in the school. And everybody looks at it and uh, trying to find out. So that's just the beginning of our education thing. When uh, Grameen Bank was starting, uh, one of the things we tried to inculcate to um, encourage everybody to uh, learn how to write their own name uh, because nobody knew how to write their own names. So that was a big struggle. There's a lot of stories about it, how it happened and how it developed into a, a center school uh, to teach the young boys and girls in the um, village so that they can acquire some kind of knowledge about the alphabets and so on. They are not afraid to go to school because children were terribly afraid to go to school because they are not familiar. There's no tradition in the family of going to school. Nobody could guide them. So orientation. So, so there are lots and lots of stories about it. So they will talk about it. And I'm very happy that Nurjahan is here. So this is a more of a real fireside ch chat. This is a conversation rather than a, a question and answer thing. They all go through the same experience. Nurjahan was the head of uh, uh, Grameen Shikka or Grameen Education uh, from the beginning. Later on, it was handed over to Nazrul, Nazrul to whatever. So they know each other and they learn from the same experiences and so on. Today, they will just narrate uh, how things happen. And uh, Nazrul has a long history with Grameen. So he has a lot of, lot of things to share with us. And he's a dedicated person on education, particularly education for the underprivileged children 
and uh, his commitment to that is a, of a amazing amazing uh, level so we will hear them talk about their experiences and share with us so i'm very happy to present both of you to you and uh, let uh, uh, nurjan start the conversation and uh, nazur will follow let's have a good conversation and listen to that it will be a record for the posterity to know what happened uh, in terms of education for the illiterate people in bangladesh thank you please nurjan go ahead thank you sir for your kind words uh, thank you uh, again uh, kaji i <coughs> kaji Yes, sir. Papa. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Papa. Okay, so uh, you started with Grameen and you worked for more than 10 years as a branch manager. And also you work with the Grameen Shikha, uh, you are working with Grameen Shikha more than 23 years. So altogether, just 33 years we are uh, working together. Uh, uh, you know, uh, our uh, microcredit program and uh, literacy program uh, started simultaneously. And, and you know that uh, when you work, Dr. Inus made a law that all the uh, member who wants to take a loan from Grameen, they must have to sign their name. Uh, it is compulsory, uh, mandatory. And, but you know, it was not easy tax, very, very hard job because during that time, most of the women are illiterate, especially in the poor community, not only the poor community, even in the middle class, women are not used to go because of religious, because of cultural, many, many other things. So there was a lot of barriers. So in that situation, uh, he gave us the tax that you have to teach them uh, how to sign. So they use uh, uh, sometimes a bamboo or a stick, uh, they write their name, we teach them how to write, and it was very tough. So I think you also have some memory. I have one memory I want to share. Uh, one of our members, we are teaching her several times, but uh, he, her hand was very stiff uh, when he take the uh, stick, the bamboo stick. Uh, he could not uh, write. But uh, later on, he write something. Actually, we are not teaching them alphabet. We teach them how to draw the signature. So uh, her husband, when he did not uh, pass, uh, her husband uh, beaten her. Uh, and uh, Dr. Inos told us, you should not give the money to this guy uh, because her husband maybe can take the money. So uh, we try to uh, understand all their situation. So I think you also have, uh, we are talking about Grameen Shikha. But there's a long story uh, behind of the Grameen Shika, Grameen uh, Center. We use as a uh, center school for the children. We use this center school for the women of uh, Grameen. Uh, so uh, can you share something, uh, your uh, memories or stories, whatever you like? Yeah, but there are a lo lot of memories, a lot of uh, examples, a lot of uh, Stories in Grameen. In Grameen Bank. You know, I, I also was uh, worked uh, as a staff of Grameen Bank. I joined Grameen Bank uh, as a branch manager. But like all other stuff, I, I had to undergo the same training process. And there are many stories, many incidents. Uh, when the narrating, the, I, I heard about a story that. Uh, a borrower, her uh, name was uh, perhaps uh, Brajabala. Brajabala, you might have heard the name. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I was there. Brajabala, yeah. Uh, it's uh, interesting uh, story. Yeah. yeah. And she was, uh, she came to the main bank, uh, that is central meeting. She wanted to be a member of uh, the group so she could receive a loan. She was, she was very poor and extremely poor. She was living in a clay house and she was a little bit aged. But it was very difficult for her to learn how to sign her name. And she failed a couple of times. But the branch manager was, uh, was very strict. No, to receive a loan, you must learn how to sign your name first. And she was, uh, she was learning, she was learning. <laughs> and one day the branch manager uh, happened to come to the center, to visit the center on, on some other occasion. And Rojavala was there. She was not uh, still uh, included in the group. But she came to the central meeting and she was insisting the branch manager that he should go to her place 
And the Brahman said, oh, I don't have much time. But this, she said, no, you must go to my house. I have to show you something. Uh, finally, the branch manager yielded uh, to her request and he went to visit her place. And what he saw was astonishing. She uh, quoted the whole courtyard. It was a small uh, courtyard. And she, she quoted the, all the courtyard with mud slime and all the clay walls of her house with mud slime and she signed her name hundreds of times on the courtyard and the walls yeah that was a story that, that, thank you uh, Kati. Oh, yeah. uh, i think uh, gramin also have a uh, program for the adult education uh, we create our center uh, center uh, as a school and also you have a uh, uh, higher education loan program for Grameen Bank borrowers. Uh, children, uh, more than 55,000 uh, students receive this loan. And every year, Grameen distribute 30,000 scholarship for our borrower children. So why uh, Dr. Inus created Grameen Shikha? Uh, you know, our Grameen Bank uh, education program, uh, the education program, the literacy literacy program that was conducted. Uh, all the programs were conducted by Grameen Bank uh, centers, that is centers in the village where uh, the loan installment, or uh, uh, the center meeting would be conducted. The loan installment uh, were done and loan proposals were made. And then all the banking function happened in the center. The banking function at the doorsteps of the borrowers, which we call a uh, center. And at, but the central uh, meeting was conducted only a couple of hours a week. So most of the time, the center was unoccupied or unused. So the center, uh, the center was used, a literacy center, both for borrowers and also for children. And I think uh, uh, Dr. News, uh, what he wants, actually Grameen Bank is targeting only their uh, members, the, their borrowers and their children. These our school center school and education for all these are uh, devoted for Grameen Bank uh, children and yeah. the members. So, but uh, Doctor is want to uh, give this opportunity the other uh, poor people in the village. So this is the, another co uh, cause to create Grameen Chika. Then the second, I think uh, the uh, expanding uh, micro credit program gradually increased day by day. And uh, there are, was a different kind of product, micro uh, credit, uh, different kind of product, uh, loan product. And uh, this was really because this program uh, in Grameen, uh, supervised by the Grameen Bank uh, staff, uh, they monitored, they supervised, sometimes they became a teacher. So it was impossible for them to manage. So we need uh, dedicated staff, we need dedicated institution. And not only this program, he wants to do more other things. So uh, he uh, created uh, Grameen Shika that's uh, started different kind of program. Uh, can you tell us uh, what, uh, what kind of program Grameen Shika? The first program that Grameen Shika started was uh, in fact the literacy program that, uh, that was conducted uh, at Grameen Bank centers, but those were only for Grameen Bank, Grameen Bank uh, borrowers and their children. Uh, but what Grameen Bank, Grameen Shika started, that was for the life oriented education program, but that was for the wider community, but all poor, poor communities, Grameen Bank borrowers, uh, their daughters, their uh, neighbors, and their sisters, their neighbors, others too, yeah. yeah. And that was low life oriented education program. That was a one year program, but this was more organized because now there is a separate institution, there is some separate staff, dedicated staff for this program, especially for the education program. And you remember the Hiramon? Yeah, of course. Hiramon, Hiramon was a part, uh, part of the program, Hiramon. Uh, but besides Hiramon, there was also primers. There were 10 primers and 10 primers for reading, for writing, for uh, accounting, uh, and for uh, say how to, how to grow vegetable, how to uh, raise chicken, how to raise poultry, how to raise uh, um, 
subtitle, and there were also uh, books on uh, awareness, rights of women, rights of children, and then uh, how to how to cultivate paddy, etc. And besides this, there was the Hiraman. Hiraman was a unique invention. It was a rickshaw. You know, Hiraman, Hiraman is a mythical bird, name of a mythical bird in Bangla, uh, which, which could fly. And Hiraman, this one was a rickshaw band, and, and it would travel from center to center, according to a sky. To village. Yeah, in the village. Because there were various uh, centers, uh, literacy centers uh, conducted by them in Shikha. And Hiraman itself was a library. There were different types of storybooks, simple, written in simple Bangla. And there was the, uh, also books uh, to make people aware, awareness books. And there was also a TV set and a video cassette player. At that time, TV set and TV video cassette player was used for showing the documentary or showing the film. And there were different educational films, educational documentary, awareness documentary, etc. And this was shown at uh, at the year at the courtyard of some borrower. And the Hiraman was there. And this was shown, there was some special uh, person who would show this. And then according to a schedule, which is every day, this is moved from this village to this village, this village to this village. And it was, yeah. it, it was a unique invention of the And uh, the uh, beauty of this program uh, was uh, the education, uh, first three months, there was no primer. Only there's uh, some uh, knife, uh, some uh, seizures, some uh, papers. So they start from the sentence, then okay. word, then uh, alphabet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Normally we go uh, alphabet, uh, word, then sentence. So it's uh, totally different. Uh, yeah. And so that from the beginning, they will not uh, afraid about the books or uh, pen, pencil. They just draw the sentence, someone draw the sentence, then they cut the uh, word as a, with a, their uh, seizure, then alphabet. In that three months, they uh, know what is the alphabet, how all the alphabet they, uh, came to know. That's a, a wonderful program we have for our uh, members of uh, and other uh, community people in the village. So, uh, and during that time, I think you know about the, our preschool, because when mother is coming to school, they also brought their uh, a small child. So who will take care? So can you tell us about the preschool or childcare uh, center? Yeah, preschool, uh, when, uh, when the mothers would come uh, to the center uh, to attend their class, uh, children uh, were roaming about. So we also organized preschools, preschools in the neighborhood. And later we found that the same center could be used for preschool and adult literacy school. So in the morning, adult literacy school was conducted. And in the afternoon, preschools were conducted for children in the village. And later UNICEF joined the program and this became a, a part of a big package, which was called ECD, you know, uh, ECD, early childhood development. It had different components. And one of the component was uh, the preschool, child development centers and preschools. And uh, we have so far we have trained more than 200,000 children in preschool. We are still conducting preschool. Okay. The uh, caregiver training. There was a caregiver training. Mothers and other caregivers in the in the family they were trained, and the trainer group. The trainer group was 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 uh, employed from the uh, from the same area. At first, we used to train some uh, educated young men. Uh, you, actually, you uh, train a lot of uh, Grameen Bank Center and other people as a leader. And uh, they conduct other. They also train other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. we call so them. We, I think we, should, uh, we should think about, about. We should uh, uh, think. Uh, you have a one uh, uh, emerging program. Yeah. Grameen uh, a scholarship management program. Uh, uh, can you tell us the system of this program and uh, how you manage and uh, what is the impact? A scholarship program. Uh, it was it was it was a brainchild of Professor Jonas. He observed that there are many scholarship programs, but scholarships were given only once, only one year. Some some many the children were uh, selected for scholarship based on their performance in some public uh, public uh, exams, and they were given uh, some scholarship for a year. 
through a big uh, ceremony and then they were forgotten. After one year, they were forgotten, new students were chosen for the scholarship program. And that is the way most of the scholarship programs are conducted in the country. But Professor Yunus said that, was that you find, up, find out poor meritorious students, especially from the village, who without some parental support, who would have to, would have to uh, stop their education without some financial support. And he encouraged us uh, to open a program. We asked him, how do we find the fund? Who will give them the lifetime scholarship program? That is once they start with the commercial scholarship, if they are to receive it until they complete their higher education, where it will work in the fund, fund will come. He said that, okay, there are many donors, and you tell the donors that you receive the donation as deposit. You keep the deposit in commercial banks, you don't spend it, you invest the money with commercial bank, and from the income, you give out scholarship. So initially, uh, we, we assured our sponsors that if you deposit a certain amount of money, say 100,000 taka, so we will give 6,000 taka or 6% if you want to 6% of the principal amount as a scholarship, your principal money will be unspent. That will not be expended from its income, we will give scholarship. And that way, we, we mobilized a lot of a lot of scholarships, and we now currently we have 184 sponsors, donors and uh, that institutions and individual sponsors. And also, uh, they can provide a name for the scholarship. Name. They can put a name on the scholarship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, scholarship program should have a name given by the sponsor, and then the student will have to open a savings account to the local government bank branch. So no scholarship money was distributed in cash. Okay, okay, Kaji. Money uh, was transferred to their account and we would monitor the program and we would send a report to the sponsor every year. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you tell us uh, impact of this program? <coughs> How many simply, children already simply, came simply out? Simply tremendous. Uh, we have uh, so far we have given a scholarship to more than 8,000 8, students, and every year we are distributing 35 million taka to scholarship on the different scholarship programs of Grameen Shikha. And so far, since we began the program in 2003, we have distributed more than 400 million taka as a scholarship. And currently, more than 3,500 students are receiving scholarship to Grameen Shikha. And as to impact, more than a thousand students have completed higher studies with Ramishika scholarship. Hundreds of them are doctors and engineers and government officials, bank executives, uh, business executives. And currently those who are receiving scholarship, more than a hundred are studying medicine and nursing and more than 125 are studying engineering. And of this, you will be glad, happy to hear that 60% of our scholars are girls. And the number I tell you, the 200, 225 students who are now studying medicine and engineering, 60% of them are girls. Thank you, Kati. This is a great uh, achievement uh, to Ramin Shika. This is a talent hunting, actually, uh, the program. Talent hunting at the same time, talent nurturing. Yeah, yeah, you are right. And many of uh, our students who received scholarship in Ramin Shekha when they were in grade eight or grade nine had completed a master's degree. Some have become university teachers. If you go to Dhaka University, there are two teachers, two assistant professors, one in the department of finance, the other in the department of nuclear engineering. Their mothers were the bank borrowers and they received the scholarship and they were in junior high school. And then with the scholarship, they completed their studies and now they're university teachers. If you go to Dhaka University, you will find a teacher. If you go to Duel, Dhaka. Uh, Many doctors in different uh, hospital. Clinic, yes. All uh, the mothers are Grameen, Grameen Bank borrowers. And uh, there are some uh, Grameen, she cannot addressing only the Grameen, uh, also addressing other poor people in the community. So we are uh, hunting the talent from all kind of uh, poor people uh, from the society. Uh, can you tell us about the uh, Hashem? Hashem's mother was not a Grameen Bank borrower. Yeah. Yeah. His father, his father was a night guard 
his was a night guard in an office and when Hashim was uh, in grade nine, his father's job was terminated. He retired from his job and it was very difficult. Hashim, uh, he, he had his uh, little sister who was uh, handicapped. The sister was married and uh, later sister was married, but uh, she was abandoned by Hashim. <coughs> Hashim's brother was uh, a driver who tried the uh, big vehicles, but uh, he made an accident and later could not uh, do the driving anymore, especially. The so ones. what happened with Hashim? And Hashim, Hashim was studying in a local school, in a local school, and uh, and it was very difficult for him because his father, his father's job was terminated and there was no income in the family. So the local headmaster, he, he approached us to give a scholarship to Hashim and we give a scholarship to Hashim. And with the scholarship, Hashim uh, completed his high school, that is a secondary school. And then uh, he, he came to Dhaka um, for higher, to complete higher secondary. And then he was a very brilliant student from the beginning. And then uh, he was uh, got admitted in Buet. Buet, you know, it, it is the uh, that is the best uh, engineering school in the country. And he completed uh, when he was in Buet, his scholarship amount was increased, so he could complete uh, his studies without uh, worrying about his uh, expenses. And then after graduation, he worked for two years uh, in a private firm, and then. Uh, after two years. Now he's in uh, Washington, D.C. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, he got a scholarship from Washington State University. And then uh, he was a student of mechanical engineering to study me mechanical engineering at uh, Washington. And then having completed the mechanical engineering degree, he, now he's working in Intel as service engineers. And now he's providing a scholarship for another student. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Hashem, That's a great news Hashem, for us. Hashem keeps in touch with the school. He's in touch with the school and with the friends he was studying with. He's, he's a pretty good boy. He didn't forget anyone, although he's now living in USA and he has become a big man, but he didn't forget anyone. And he was keeping in touch with headmaster. The headmaster once told him that there is a very blind student in the school and he needs some financial support. Unfortunately, the boy's father recently died. Okay, that's a good news that Hashim yeah. has been providing a scholarship to the boy, and the boy he completed his uh, secondary and higher secondary with support from Hashim. Uh, he got chance in uh, Notre Dame College. You know, Notre Dame College is one of the best colleges in Dhaka. And uh, last year uh, he, he finished his higher secondary, and now he's um, uh, preparing for admission test in um, for the big universities in the country. And we're expecting that uh, this boy will also be able to get chance in some. Wonderful. Uh, can you tell us about uh, how, the percentage of the scholarship? How much go for the girls and how much go for the boys? Among all these scholarships. All the scholarship of all the scholarships so far, and of all the scholarships uh, which are given currently, nearly fifty-eight percent goes to girls and forty-two percent to boys. This was our, our policy from the beginning. So you started changing the girls' life. Preference, preference to girls. If there were two point candidates and both were uh, uh, equivalent in all respect, that came from the same background, same uh, merit, then the girl would be preferred. This is still our policy. Can you tell me just uh, about uh, Ali Hussain, who was a uh, very yeah, yeah. And he lived in a, uh, he lived yeah, yeah. In the same house where the cow and he lived yeah. together. I still uh, remember his uh, uh, picture. Uh, there was a lantern, there was a small tool uh, where he did, and he walks to his father. His father was a day laborer. So, can you tell me what happened with uh, Alison? That was a very, very modest house. Uh, the walls were made of straw. And in front of the house, there were two. Two, two very small rooms, both were still made of straw. And in, in one room, Ali Hussain was living, and in the other room, the cow was living. Because uh, uh, cow, cow was now living. what is the now what is uh, his status? What he is doing now? Ali Hussain, Ali Hussain with Jamin Shekhar scholarship, he completed his school, he completed his college and in university, he completed his law degree, he got a master's degree from uh, in law. And now he is a full-fledged advocate. 
can you tell us any story about the gun? You provide a scholarship? Many, many. One Just girl, one girl. Very shortly. No. One girl, I told you that uh, we have a, we, one of our scholars is a black teacher of Black University. Her name, her name is Sharmin. Sharmin's mother, uh, Sharmin's, that was also Sharmin's father was uh, poor, uh, that is small traders in the village. And uh, she was the only member in the family who completed primary school. No one else completed primary school. And Sharmin received a scholarship, uh, Ganeshika scholarship when she was in grade eight. And, and he finished uh, her master's degree, then he went to one year uh, world with the yeah, doctorate yeah, rules, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. he became a teacher of Black University. Yeah. Uh, and she, 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 she completed her uh, uh, bachelor's and master's degree from uh, Dhamminabhan University, and uh, she, she did very well. She got uh, 3.89. I remember she got 3.89 out of four. And uh, she was uh, she was nominated uh, to participate in one year world summit in 2013 that was uh, held in Johannesburg, South Africa. And all on a sudden, all on a sudden, one day Sharmin called me over phone, and she was she was she was she was weeping. Uh, I said, "What has happened?" She said that, "Sir, just now I I has been nominated, I has been selected by Brad to join as lecturer." Of the Department of Mathematics. Kaji, uh, can you share uh, with us about your vocational training program? Because uh, now in Bangladesh, uh, unemployment rate is high, quite high. After COVID, it increased. So, how are your vocational training uh, helping to overcome this situation? Vocational, we know, Appa, you were you were in the Minchi at the time. We started the program in 2008, the vocational training program. And now we have, been, uh, we have been conducting different types of training, but all our training are short, short term training. Two duration. Months. duration? Duration is some training are two months, some training are four months. And two of the training programs, they are certified by Bangladesh Technical Education Board, that is our students. So it is two to six months. Yeah, both are six months, so electrical training and computer training. Other trainings are either two months or four months. And we have different types of training, electrical uh, house wiring, fan motor wiring, industrial electrical wiring, uh, uh, industrial sewing, how to work on different types of uh, sewing machines. Uh, in a government factory, we, we teach them uh, how to work on four or five types of machines, usual machines, and some of them are computerized. And then there is government's machine mechanics. We, we teach uh, our, our students how to repair, uh, how to uh, maintain the usual machines. So we teach them uh, to work on 16 types of machines. And I told you some of the machines are very expensive and uh, are computerized. So and do you provide the job to them after we, finishing the... We don't, we don't come the job to anybody, but we make sure that they get a job. We have a job placement officer and we have employed committee. And our our graduates, there is they they join it, they, they become employed two months after graduation. Eighty percent of them become uh, uh, employed within two months. Some of them, uh, some of them, uh, chosen uh, to become self-employed. Some of the electrical shop, uh, mobile phone servicing shop. Some of working uh, freelance, freelance machine mechanic or freelance uh, computer worker, etc. And so far, we have trained more than twelve thousand young men and women at our center. Last year, we trained more than 1,200 at the Manchester Vocational Training Center. That's a great. Uh, you also run Slum School. Very interesting program. A Slum School, you know, Upper Slum School is a one-room school. This is a one-room school. It has two shifts, a morning shift and afternoon shift. There are two batches of students, morning batch, 22, 25 students and another batch, afternoon batch, and there is a separate teacher for each batch. Each batch is considered a school. So we, in total, currently we have 26 centers and 52, 52 batches. In total, we have 1,050 students in our school from grade one to grade five. They enroll, they enroll in grade one, and over five years, next year, they're in grade two, three, four, five, and we follow the government curriculum. Our schools are recognized by government, and so, uh, government primaries are supplied to the community of free of cost. And our students, we follow, we follow the government curriculum, the government uh, module, and our students take part in three exams, like any other school in the country. And when they complete the grade, 
that the year uh, that is uh, say grade one they go to grade two in the second year and the third year in grade three and over five years they complete primary and after when they when they complete uh, year five they can pick for the national public primary school finals and you will be glad to hear that in last primary school finals our students participated 154 students participated and 148 of them passed the pass rate was 96 percent which was higher than the national pass rate okay uh that's a great job uh i think uh, you can uh tell us about the gstp that means uh the new program of grameen shikha Oh, uh, uh, yes. it's, it's, uh, let me tell about another program that is we call it secondary school support project. Our slum school graduates, our slum school graduates in 2019 we introduced a new program which we call it secondary school support project. Usually in the past we used to give scholarship to our students, slum school graduates who are meritorious and who wanted to continue uh, high school. But in 2019 we have taken up a special program. All our graduates, our Islam school graduates, they enroll in grade six in some local primary, local high schools. And we are paying all the expenses and we are looking after them, we are monitoring them, we are keeping in touch with the school. And currently we have more than 600 students, 603 precisely, who are in different grades, say grade six to grade 10. Okay, thank you. Uh, you also have some program with the physically disabled and mentally disabled or weak, uh, or fun, very vulnerable uh, child. Those uh, don't have father or mother or both. They are depending on uh, the uh, paternal or other uh, people. Uh, totally uh, uh, vulnerable child. So. Can you tell us about uh, what kind of program you do for them? What kind of help you are doing? Uh, usually, uh, we try to address them, address them within our regular program. Say, under a scholarship management program, we give a scholarship to, to a child who is a physically, uh, physically handicapped, or, or to someone at the vocational training center, a physically handicapped uh, young man or woman. Receive a training, say electrical training, a computer training at our production training center. But we have now had a special program which is called Gamin Scholarship and Training Project, which is funded by Gamin Telecom. And this is different components. One is the scholarship component. Under the scholarship component, we are giving scholarship to uh, orphans and handicapped, handicapped children. Orphans mean they don't have mother or don't have father, and those who are handicapped, physically handicapped, most of them are physically handicapped. A couple of students are mentally handicapped. And uh, currently, we have 510 students under this program, and 70 of the students are handicapped. So, only you provide a scholarship for education, or you also provide some other help too? Uh, this is for them. This is uh, only for the orphans and handicapped under the Government Scholarship and Training Project. And there are some other components, uh, GSTP, which is funded by Grand Telecom. One is uh, the nursing student, nursing scholarship. You know, uh, there is a nursing college uh, in coming, which is called the Caledonian College of Nursing, which is affiliated with Glasgow uh, University, Glasgow. And GCCN, uh, 24 of GCCN students, all girls, they receive a scholarship from this project. They are all poor students who, who could not um, uh, study or take a nursing degree from nursing college. And these students, all their expenses, expenses are covered from the GSTP project. I think we should uh, mention about the, uh, what is the Grameen Caledonian uh, Nursing College. This is a uh, college uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, among all the nursing college, it is the top one. And uh, Glasgow Caledonian College, uh, with the collaboration of Glasgow Caledonian College, uh, it was uh, working tremendously. And whenever uh, any uh, Bangladesh Nursing Council always advise other uh, nursing college to visit uh, Grameen Caledonian Nursing College to see what they are working, how they are working. So this is a really it start in two thousand nine, but. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we uh, 
uh, reached a very good position. And we now uh, 1,000 uh, students can uh, read in our own campus in Diabari. Uh, this is a really very exciting news for us. Uh, then uh, you have also a program for the doctor to... Yeah. Doctors, uh, under, under the GSTP projects, uh, doctors and health workers of uh, coming healthcare services. You know, coming healthcare services uh, is running uh, some uh, eye hospitals, four high, uh, eye hospitals in, in different areas of the country, and they also have vision centers that is eye care, several eye care centers in the country. And their doctors and their health workers, when they receive some special training, these are funded by GSTP. And that means they are specialized uh, to yeah. make them a specialized in some uh, yeah, yeah, sector yeah. like a yeah. or yeah. glaucoma, whatever it is. So, so, so ophthalmology, faculty training, MLOP, mid level ophthalmic personnel, and this training. And they receive this training uh, from India, from Aurobindo Hospital, and in Bangladesh, there are some offices and hospitals like Islamia Eye Hospital, and they receive this training there. And all the expenses, all the training expenses are covered by. You. Scholarship and training project. And, so, and I think we should know that in Bangladesh, every year 100,000 new uh, cataract uh, patients add in. But we don't have, uh, in Bangladesh, it doesn't have sufficient uh, premise to treat them, to uh, operate them. or So uh, Dr. Inus uh, created four uh, hospitals in Bogura, one Borishal, one Thakurga, one Shatkira, a new one is going on uh, Russia. So this is a wonderful news uh, to have uh, trained them. And the, the, some of them uh, uh, trained from India, uh, some from uh, Islamia Hospital, uh, and some from uh, in Chittagong, many, many others. So it's a wonderful uh, program. Kaji, uh, I was asking you about uh, we are talking when we are talking about the handicapped or mentally disabled. Uh, so far, uh, we give some scholarship to CRP in Shabar uh, to help them to make them some uh, skill so that they can depend on them. So what was the purpose of this uh, program? Uh, that is the GSTP. Yeah. GSTP, GSTP is special. For the handicap, especially for the handicap. Yeah, and, and not only, not, we, we are giving not only scholarships, and we also give them some medical support. If sometimes we are organizing workshops, sometimes we are organizing, uh, taking them to doctors or calling doctors to check their eyes. And if someone has any problem, we, we, we are giving them financial support and technical support. And some of the students uh, who have who has problem with uh, hearing, we, we have supplied them here in eight. Some students said they needed some wheelchair to move. So we provided them some wheelchair. And sometimes uh, we are giving, uh, we are <coughs> paying the expenses of the treatment in hospital. I still remember there was a girl uh, who was uh, studying in five class, but uh, he cannot hear. Uh, and I think, you know, in Bangladesh, uh, there is not a sufficient uh, school for uh, especially in the village for this uh, physically or uh, mentally disabled children. And uh, I uh, remember the girl, she was a very meritorious girl, but he cannot uh, listen because he's a dumb. So uh, we take them, we take her with her parents uh, to the doctor and doctor uh, examine her, then he, uh, gave that uh, he need uh, hearing aid. So we provide uh, uh, hearing aid, uh, this girl, many other girls also, but uh, especially, and he was doing very wonderful uh, result uh, later on. So this is the new uh, life for her. His parents uh, are really, really very grateful to uh, Gramin Shikha. So, and uh, I, I, I think uh, we can uh, remember about uh, Gramin Sheikh is working uh, with the medical uh, to train the doctor and also there is a program for Nobinud Dukta, training program for Nobinud Dukta. Do you like to say something about the Nobinud Dukta? Uh, 
Now we look at our young entrepreneur program. Uh, it is conducted by three domain companies, Grameen Telecom Trust, Grameen Trust, and Grameen uh, Shukti Samadhi Taksha. And uh, this is uh, equity finance program. That is, this domain of the class or young entrepreneurs, uh, they have their own business and they need some finance. So this program, the program, the Novi Nutta program is investing in equity as uh, money as equity finance to this uh, entrepreneurs. And so far, they have provided equity finance to nearly 120,000 entrepreneurs. And the total amount of uh, money uh, invested is more than 12 billion dollars. So we uh, trained more than 200 staff those who were handling this uh, Nobi Nuddhakta, who was living in the village, uh, running their business. So we trained uh, from programming, Shika, we trained uh, their staff. Uh, and uh, then they go to the village. And uh, this is a learning by doing program. Uh, they join first uh, two or three days in Gramin Shika. Then uh, they go to the village and uh, learning uh, through practical experience. Then they come back. So there was a uh, three session uh, after one month and within three months, uh, they became a, they got the graduation and then uh, finally they settled with the three company. So this is a wonderful uh, program uh, for Grammy. And so uh, if we uh, remember, uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, challenging uh, Work. While you are working uh, with the government uh, initially, uh, we work with the, some arsenic mitigation program. Yeah. There was a lot of challenge. Uh, can you remember some of things? Yeah, arsenic, what, arsenic, arsenic, arsenic mitigation, mitigation program, program. Was, uh, was one of the one of the earliest programs of government Sheikh. Government Sheikh in fact inherited the program from government bank. It was a government bank program, and later it was handed over to government Sheikh. And we, uh, the program was conducted in collaboration with UNICEF Bangladesh. And we had different components. We worked, uh, in fact, in three districts. Damin Shikas worked in three districts. And what we would do was uh, we would conduct uh, this campaign about arsenic among local community. And then we would test cubes wellness hand pumps you know hand pump uh, is still uh, the main source of drinking water in, in the village and then we would paint the uh, uh walls red or green uh, green if the water was contaminated it was painted red if it was safe it was painted green and also we would, if there was all red uh walls in certain area then we would have to supply them water options that is different types of uh, filters and in the beginning, uh, it was it was it was very challenging because people were not aware about uh, arsenic hazard. That arsenic was harming them. It was carcinogenic. That it uh, that it produces cancer. And we had uh, we had uh, a very difficult time to convince people that they should not drink arsenic contaminated water. And then uh, there was uh, another obstacle was the painting the tube oil red. Whenever we want to uh, paint a tube oil red. Sometimes people <laughs> can jump in, oh, you cannot paint my uh, tube oil red. We said, no, no problem. If the, if the um, tube oil is painted red, you cannot drink water, but you can use the water for any other purpose. And if there is no um, option for uh, safe drinking water, then we can supply you um, different types of filters. And uh, we, we, in fact, uh, in collaboration with UNICEF, we, we, uh, we uh, that is constructed various filters, sometimes pond sand filter, uh, rainwater harvester, you know the names. That's and great. Finally, finally, we conducted another unique program that is, uh, we call it pipeline water supply project in two villages in, in uh, uh, Kandi. And in these two villages, we constructed, we constructed two overhead tanks. Each of the tanks can contain 10,000 liter water. And there was the, uh, um, pump at the base of the filter and it was uh, dug about 800 feet at 800 feet level because at that level there is no arsenic. Arsenic is present only at shallow level and water would be pumped 
three times a day, water would be supplied to the villagers. And from the tank, aluminum pipes were spread throughout the village, not at every household because it was not possible to, uh, to give a uh, separate uh, water tap to every village. But you know, villagers in Bangladesh, uh, they live in clusters. So for every cluster, there was a water tap and water was available there, uh, say, in the morning and in the noon time and again in the afternoon time. And there was- so How many beneficiary are there when we uh, handed over during that time? And one, the, maybe 100, and, but now- and, and we asked the community that you make a committee, you, you, you take some service from people, Say so initially, uh, they charge 30 tata per month. It was not a big amount, 30 tata. But since there was uh, uh, hundreds of lines, hundreds of water taps, it was a big amount. So they could hire a, uh, a supervisor to look after okay. the system and okay. make water testing from time to time. Okay, last question, Kazi. Uh, thank you. Uh, last question uh, about your uh, uh, scholarship management program. I hope uh, some of your students already in abroad. Uh, how many students in abroad with the scholarship uh, from different country? How many students? The students uh, who were abroad, we, we didn't uh, give them any money to go abroad. They were all given students who received scholarship from Dhamin Sheikh. Later, they received scholarship from different universities. We have only one minute time, so please. Uh, yeah. So I can tell you about a boy whose name is uh, Khairul Islam. We received the scholarship because which was sponsored by Dhamin Communications. So Khairul Islam, uh, he received the Nazbul also. Nazbul also in Abdul. Yeah, Khairul yeah. Khairul is almost completed his PhD degree in cancer diagnosis from Tripura University in Finland. Nazbul Islam, of who you might know her, he attended uh, one young world summit. He had a very hard time when his mother died. He almost dropped out of university, but somehow he managed. And, but he completed in computer engineering and then he went to Germany in Rheinberg University of Technology. And recently he completed his uh, master's degree and now he's working in uh, Germany. And there is uh, also uh, Hashim. I told yeah. about Thank you, Kaji. We are at the end of the session. So I would like to hand over to Jina. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, audience. Thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you, Kaji. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nurjahan Appa and Mr. Kazin Nazul Haq. A wonderful conversation, truly a fireside chat. Um, it was great to hear about the history of Grameen Shika, the struggles of someone who could not sign, then success stories of students who are now in, you know, university teachers who are now studying abroad. Um, wonderful to know on the opportunities given to those with disabilities and um, opportunities through Nobin program and uh, for the scholarships. So um, I hope our audience member, we have enjoyed today's conversation. The recordings will be available on our social media, on YouTube, so you can watch it all anytime at, you want at your free time. And um, thank you again, um, uh, Nozul uh, Sir and Nur Jahan uh, Today, we also want to express our condolence to all those who have lost their lives and affected by the a massive earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Uh, the epicenter, unfortunately, is in a location where Grameen program started in 2003-2004. So many are affected and many will need support. So we send our prayers and best wishes for those affected. Thank you again for watching our event. Uh, we will now play our, some slides on our, our upcoming events. One is Social Business Day, which is in uh, July. It will be happening from 27th to 29th July in uh, Malaysia. Uh, it will be with in collaboration with Al Bukhari University in Malaysia. And we welcome you to join um, Social Business Day in July. Information on how to join, how to attend the sessions will all be available on our social media. So please keep an eye on the UNUS Center Facebook page and our UNUS Center page. In addition, we will have our uh, Global Social Business Summit and the Social Business Academia Conference in November. Uh, the call for papers for the Ac Social Business Academia Academia conference will be out uh, in one week time. So please keep an eye again on our uh, website. Um, you uh, researchers, students are encouraged to submit papers on social business and the topics will also be on our website soon. Uh, I kindly request the um, tech team to play the slides. 
Thank you very much for joining today's sessions. I, we all look forward to seeing you in the upcoming lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.